a sellout crowd on hand at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee as Cincinnati is in town to take on the number eight team in the country, the Golden Eagles of Marquette. to NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber two of the top teams in Conference USA the Bearcats of Cincinnati taking on the team trying to wrap up the regular season crown outright today the Golden Eagles of Marquette only four losses on the year only one loss here at home in the Bradley Center and hi everybody, Terry Gannon along with Jay Billis. Glad to have you with us here in Milwaukee today. It's that time of the year when you want that role to start, Jay. Two of the top teams, as I said, in the conference and certainly two teams destined to head to the postseason. Yeah, both these teams headed to the NCAA tournament. Marquette in championship week playing for a championship today. They're playing against a traditional power in Conference USA. Cincinnati, who's led by Leonard Stokes, who's an athletic wing. Everything starts with Stokes. He likes to get out and transition. A pretty good shooter. He's been putting the ball on the floor and attacking the basket loves the middle drives. Marquette's going to have to pay very close attention to him. And for the Golden Eagles, it's been Dwayne Wade all season long. A complete basketball player. He scores outstanding on the defensive end, gets a lot of deflections. Important for Marquette to rebound the basketball today. Whoever controls the backboards will control the game. Take a look right now at our Toyota starting lineup. Stokes the scorer at the small forward spot. Jason Maxiel the scorer inside for the Bearcats. But for Marquette in the first matchup, it was Robert Jackson who dominated in the paint. He had 21 points, just controlled things from the start. He'll get help, obviously, the outside game from Dwayne Wade and their point guard, Travis Diener. And the Bearcats led by Bob Huggins in his 14th year as the head coach at Cincinnati, 349 wins. Overall, the winningest coach in the history of Bearcat basketball. Bob's in there somewhere. There he is in the chair, pointing his finger out. There he is, standing up. But it has been a, a difficult season health-wise for Bob Huggins, but they have pulled it together. They're 17 and 9. And Jay, who's done a better job in college basketball than Tom Creek? Conference USA Coach of the Year last season and a very strong candidate to do it again this season. Not only Coach of the Year in Conference USA, but should get some recognition nationally for the great job he's done in building up this program in just four short years. It has been a sellout for quite some time, and we are underway in Milwaukee. Teron Barker, the point guard for the Bearcats, controlling it over to Stokes. Marquette in the man-to-man -man on the first series of the game. Todd Townsend drawing the assignment to guard Leonard Stokes and Dwayne Wade, an outstanding individual defender, taking the point guard, Teron Barker. Here's Barker. Barker's from Race, Racine, Wisconsin, so a bit of a homecoming for him. He takes the first shot of the game. It's a three-pointer. Important start for Cincinnati. This is a team that has not shot the ball well all season long. The only problem that Cincinnati has faced is their inability to score. So getting off to a good start shooting the ball bodes well. Scott Merritt and the post presence over to Wade. One-on-one -on -one move in the air ball on the first shot of the game for the man who leads the conference in scoring, Dwayne Wade, at 21.7 per game. The first meeting, it was a six-point game, but Marquette was up big in that. Cincinnati came back on the uh, the bench play of Tony Bobbitt to make it a game, but the free throws told the difference down the stretch. Yeah, it looked like a game at the end looking at the stat sheet, but it never really was. Marquette dominated the glass from start to finish. That's why I think rebounding will be so important in today's game. Stokes misses badly, and the rebound goes to the man who was guarding him, Todd Townsend. Here's Diener pushing it up. Travis Diener. He's uh, done such a good job this year with his leadership. A really tough kid. Barrett with the left hand. There's Jackson, the inside presence, taken away, and Wade gets it back to Diener for three. He can shoot that, not this time. Those are usually the threes that can kill you because there's so much going on underneath. You kick it out to an open guy on a loose ball. Stokes pushing it up, gets the easy lay-in, his first bucket of the game. And it's the Bearcats who have the 5-0 early lead. You don't want to give Cincinnati baskets in transition because they are not a very good shooting team. You want to make them grind it out against your half-court defense. Transition means easy baskets. Bearcats, one of the better defensive teams in the country, top defensive club in Conference USA. Run out ball screen. Merritt down low to Jackson. Holman, who started the last three games, a tough assignment for him, the follow-up by Jackson, and they're going to get Holman with the foul. Holman, big and strong, was a defensive lineman in high school, was recruited as a football player by Tennessee and Michigan. 
but could not keep Rob Jackson off the offensive glass. Jackson has three offensive rebounds already in this ballgame. Bob Huggins talking to the officials early on in this one. And Robert Jackson, the senior out of Milwaukee, went to Mississippi State and back here to Marquette. For three years at Mississippi State. Certainly dominated the first game. In fact, Jay, after that first matchup was when Bob Huggins really took start stock of his team and started talking about the need for more heart, the need for more toughness. Well, they kicked them out of their locker room after that. Yeah. We're wearing their official practice gear. They're just wearing standard issue grays. He wanted them to earn everything. It's a privilege that he thinks to play that Cincinnati wants him to play a certain way. I have a feeling that's not that unusual in a current start. No, that, and that happens all the time. Bob's done it before. It just gets their attention. Jordan Williams lost it for a moment, now gets it back. Dean all over in the fadeaway. Not a great shot. Here's Jackson who clears it with another rebound. Solid job defensively by Diener. That's what you want Williams to do. Put the ball on the floor. When he sets his feet, especially from the corner, he absolutely drills it. Wade, they just left him wide open. The red seat parted, and he draws the foul. Just a simple little pass fake, and everybody bit on the ball fake. And there was a gigantic opening there. Look, simple pass fake, and Barker takes it. And just too late coming over. Holman was the one who got him. So that's the second foul already on Derek Holman. We'll no doubt see a lot of Kareem Johnson, who was starting and plays much of the game in the paint. But you're looking at a man who may be the conference player of the year. I think he will be. I think Dwayne Wade will be Conference USA Player of the Year, and he has had a lot of mention for National Player of the Year. He has been a complete basketball player, averaging close to 22 points per game. He shoots a terrific percentage and really have a lot of respect for how hard he works on the defensive end. Armin Kirkland off the bench for Bob Huggins in for Holman, who's now got the two fouls. A little bit of 3-2 zone right now. You expect to see a lot of zone against a team that does not shoot the ball very well from the outside. I think you'll see Tom Crean mix up some defenses in this ballgame. He's got a 2-3 zone he likes to go to from time to time and has played some box and one on occasion. Lynn Williams can shoot it, can't buy it, and Diener gets the loose ball rebound. And Leonard Stokes almost grabbed a weak side rebound there with those shots coming so often from the side and the corner. Weak side rebounding will be an important factor in today's game. Operating the dish to Jackson who lost it out of bounds, but it was tipped out of bounds by Cincinnati. We'll stay right here. Dwayne Wade so good off the dribble. Explosive with his first step. And he can really get to the basket and finish. But thus far in the game, Marquette has not been solid finishing. Merritt's had it inside, as has Jackson. They've not been able to seal the deal. Marquette with the three free throws, but that's it. Nothing from the field. Jackson with a lot of time. and takes his time. Off the glass and the foul. They're going to whistle Jason Maxiel. And Jackson gets the first bucket from the floor for Marquette in the game. Robert Jackson has excellent footwork inside. Just backing his defender down, Maxiel taking a bump and still able to execute the shot, even being hit on the arm. And Robert Jackson was an excellent scorer when he was at Mississippi State, averaging double figures for the Bulldogs. And he has been a huge factor, not only in Conference USA, but in taking Marquette to the next level. Having that inside-outside game has been really important for Marquette. Top 10 in both scoring and rebounding. The top field goal percentage man in Conference USA. The foul whistle on Scott Merritt, who picks up his first. Armin Kirkland putting the ball on the floor. Kirkland had 18 points against UAB, but it was more of a transition game. So he was able to get out and run, and Scott Merritt's done a nice job of versatile defender. Kirkland, another interchangeable part. He can play the two spot, the three spot, wherever Bob Huggins needs him off the bench. Missed the first three weeks of the year with a fractured jaw, and there goes Williams. Field Williams, his first bucket, it's a three-pointer, and it's 8-5 to five Cincinnati. Williams is an excellent three-point shooter. He has not been shooting the ball well over his last few games. He's 17 of his last 71 coming into this one. Wade, nowhere to go off the double team to Diener. 0 for 2 from three-point land so far for Travis Diener. Pretty good job rebounding and boxing out by Cincinnati. It's a tough team, especially defensively. You're not going to get anything easy off Cincinnati. Max Seal the bucket and the foul on Jackson. So turnabout's fair play. Jackson with the bucket and the foul at the other end. This time Max Seal at his end. Jason Maxiel loves the turnaround jumper. Can go over either shoulder. 
See, as soon as he catches it, he looks inside, goes over that right shoulder, and he's so long, a seven foot three inch wingspan, so he can rise up over you and shoot over, although he does have problems with bigger defenders at times. So far, the crowd has not really been a factor. Not much noise here in the Bradley Center, even though it is a sellout crowd. I think they're just waiting to explode. So far, Marquette hasn't really given them anything offensively to put their hands together for. They haven't finished plays just yet. Dieter, the leading assist man in Conference USA, gets it down to Merritt, and it's knocked out of bounds. So we'll have a timeout here with 15-23 left in the first half. Cincinnati with a five-point lead on the road early. for Cincinnati on the road. Marquette trying to wrap up the regular season Conference USA crown outright today. And Cincinnati trying to earn a bye in next week's Conference UA USA tournament in the first round. And there are four teams involved. There are a lot of different scenarios. If they win today, Jay, they get the bye. If they lose, they have to wait and see what happens elsewhere. A little bit of an unusual year as a good execution on the out-of-bounds underneath, especially out of the timeout. That's one thing Tom Preen has always done a really good job of, is executing out of timeouts with his team. Wade's got four. Kirkland fires from three-point range, and Cincinnati hot from the outside. That was a box and one. Travis Diener went box and one on field Williams, and I think Teron Barker hitting that initial three really gave his team a lot of confidence coming into this ballgame. That's right now five of eight from the field for Cincinnati. Wade inside the Jackson, his defender fell away. The tip up no good, and it's the offensive rebound, but it doesn't really get him anywhere. Boy, they've had so many chippies, but just unable to finish. Need to be stronger. On Barker, this fires badly. Here comes Wade on the run. He's got Diener on the right. No numbers, though, and he pulls it back out. Wade, the up and under for the dunk. Off the dish from Townsend. He's got six. That's a good way to get one to go down. Old school, a little give and go. The explosiveness in the first step. Dwayne Wade, one of the elite players in the country. Marquette still just three for ten from the floor, though. Little spark for him now, though. Inside out game, Barker buys it again from three-point range. He's got a couple of those, six points in all. And nice relocation pass by Jason Maxfield. Got to be stronger with the ball against this team. Quick hands from Barker to Stokes. Contact in the offensive foul, they'll wipe that off. Merritt stepped in nicely, so Stokes draws his first foul of the game. Give credit to Scott Merritt for getting back and getting defensive position. I don't know about the call. Awfully difficult if you're Leonard Stokes to have to deal with that. It looked like he did a solid job, and there was not straight-on contact, which you would expect when you get a call like that in transition. Seven-point lead for the Bearcats on the road to left. The quick hands again, the strip, the steal, they're going the other way. Diener needs to protect that from behind. That was just Teron Barker reaching around from behind, and Diener kept it out to the side of his body instead of in front. So the foul on Diener, his first. I was about to say Cincinnati trying to take care of business here so they don't have to worry about what happens elsewhere. But if they do lose today, they've got to wait to see what happens with St. Louis. They would not win in the tie between St. Louis and St. Louis would get the number four seed. But against UAB, if they tied with them, Marquette would get the number four seed. Have to wait and see what happens with Charlotte and Louisville, too. Marquette back to man-to-man. -to -man. Do a great job of protecting the elbow and the block with upside defense. Double team down low to Hicks, who just came into the game, and he loses it to Wade. Eric Hicks had it, gave it right to Wade. And a nice play by Steve Novak, getting on the floor and getting possession of that ball. He's been playing much tougher over the last three weeks. And Diener is going to back it out, get things under control. Run a set, a called play. Diener, the sophomore from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Marquette's timing just a bit off on these sets. Going to clear it for Wade, under 10 on the shot clock, and he loses it, but they call the foul on Kirkland. He got bailed out. Cincinnati is really going after the ball. Strong hands and doing a solid job of knocking it away. First on Kirkland as Joe Chapman comes into the game to give Dwayne Wade a rest. Into the game is Steve Novak, too, a highly recruited freshman from Brown Deer, Wisconsin. 
Novak, an excellent shooter. His last 25 shots have been threes. He's shooting like 57% in the last five games from three-point range. Not this time, though. Diener with the quick hands. A great anticipation by Diener. Townsend spotting up from three-point range. Nothing going for the Golden Eagles outside. Well, that's a tough shot. He was in a dead run. Not sure that was the look you wanted. You come down off the break running like that. That's one of the toughest shots in basketball. It really is, especially from that distance when you're floating. Kirkland on the move, and Novak with the reach. His first of the game. So Cincinnati controlling things so far here in Milwaukee. They're up by seven. Cincinnati with the early lead, up by seven over number eight Marquette. The Golden Eagles, one of the top offensive teams in Conference USA, but it's not holding true so far. They're shooting 25% in the floor. Well, they're going against one of the best defensive teams in the country. Cincinnati holds its opponents to 39% shooting on the season. And things are going to be very difficult all day long for Marquette. They're not going to get anything easy. And really, their scores have come off of an out-of-bounds underplay where Dwayne Wade got a layup, he got a dunk basically in transition, and Robert Jackson hit a little turnaround jumper off a broken play. Other than that, they've missed everything they've taken. Kirkland hits the side of the board, and it starts the fast break for the Golden Eagles. Townsend to the baseline, taking it back. Nice catch by Jackson. And the jump hook for Robert Jackson, who's got five in the game. Well, Jackson is big inside, but he's got great feet. Able to get those feet set, good footwork, and he's got a very nice touch. So far, Dwayne Wade is two on the three from the floor. The rest of the team for Marquette, two for ten. Nice turnaround on the baseline for Jason Maxiel, the sophomore from Carrollton, Texas. Can't let him get position on the low block against Oklahoma State. He absolutely killed the Cowboys with his turnaround jump shot. Got that deep position, had 24 points, and had another 20-point game right after against Louisville. Jackson, as they look to establish that down low again, Chapman over the back for a rebound and had it stripped. The quick hands of Stokes. Well, Chapman comes in for brief periods, and does a very good job defensively. And over his last couple games, really grabs some big offensive rebounds and continuing that today against Cincinnati. Stokes splits the double that came late, and then nice little move into the lane for Leonard Stokes. He's got four. Marquette just a step slow defensively, their help side. Not there on that last occasion. Townsend. Every time down, they're looking to go to Jackson, who dishes it to Chapman and draws the foul as Kirkland ends up jumping right over his back. Nothing intentional, just a little head and shoulder fake, and Kirkland went over the top. Good pass here by Robert Jackson, and as Kirkland comes down from the top, nothing intentional at all. Kirkland. Uh, Chapman just hesitated a bit before he went up with it. But Armin Kirkland, who came off the bench for Derek Holman, who had two fouls, you know, this now picks up his second check. And this is a tough call for Marquette because they're going to have the ball out of bounds underneath on the baseline when Chapman really couldn't go up with the ball. He essentially got tackled, not purposely, but even if he tried to go up, he couldn't have got through there. Way back off the bench. Well, Cincinnati just uses their hands so well defensively. It's almost like in football where it's not enough anymore to just go to tackle somebody. You try to knock the ball away. Right? Cincinnati moves their feet so well to stay in front and make it difficult for you to shoot over, but they're also going to slap up and slap to the side of that ball. Yeah, you're right. It, one of the golden rules used to be don't use your hands, use your feet. The follow-up by Merritt and the foul. A little life for the Golden Eagles. Don't forget tomorrow, Michael Jordan plays in what could be his final game in Madison Square Garden. The Wizards taking on the Knicks. Then, in the second half of our doubleheader, Shaq Kobe and the Lakers host Allen Iverson and the Sixers. NBA Sundays on ABC. We got hoops playoffs just a month away. You know, Terry, it was bad enough in college. We both played against Michael Jordan in college when he made us feel inferior back then when we were in our teens and early 20s. But now, when we are approaching 40, he's making us feel even worse. Still playing? <laughs> he can barely get up and down at the Y. And he's on the all-star team. Doesn't he, seem right. He shows flashes of the old brilliance throughout every game. And somehow plays hurt. Now every game. Oh, nice dish from Wade to Merritt. Well, Wade had an opening. I was surprised he couldn't get all the way to the basket. But the wonderful dish to Merritt. 
point game, and for the first time in the game, the crowd is a factor. Stokes over Novak. Out of bounds. We'll wait for the call, and it's Golden Eagle basketball. Dwayne Wade putting the ball on the floor, going around that ball screen, but I thought he had an opening to get there. He turned and tried to spin, but just a terrific pass off the pivot to Merritt, and Merritt finished very effectively. 2-3 zone right now for Cincinnati. Kareem Johnson off the bench for Bob Huggins. Tony Bobbitt, instant offense. Number 15 almost got the steal. He's uh, on the floor now. Bobbitt had 16 points against Marquette in the first ball game, but he only played 11 minutes. Not bad. Novak inside Merritt. Every time down, Marquette, it's clear what they're trying to do. They go into the paint for the first option, and Merritt now has six. And Merritt has really improved this game, Terry. Everything he does now, positive and confident. Terrific hands inside. Defensive pressure now from Marquette. Offensive foul. The offensive foul and the momentum clearly on the side of the Golden Eagles. Parker picks up his first. A little bit of a clear out with that off arm. That right arm on the left-handed drive, not a whole lot of contact, but just enough where the referee could see it. I'm not sure there was an advantage, disadvantage on the play, but the right call. Scott Merritt has the last six points for Marquette. He's on the weak side right now against this zone. Here comes Novak. You have to have an awareness for Novak when you're in this zone because he can drill it from deep. Going to get the whistle away from the ball. Terry Sanders with the push. Marquette one for six to start the game and shooting 50% since that time. And really, they got it started with their defense, Terry. A little bit more intense on the defensive end. And they were able to feed off of that and running better offense, getting better movement. And isn't that the case most of the time in college basketball? It really is. You try to tell kids that, but yeah. we were as dumb about it as everybody else when we were that age. It's not the flashy part of the game, but certainly it ignites the flashy part. And there is one flashy part. Teron Barker with his third three of the game, and he's got nine. Teron Barker may not be a great shooter, only averages six points per game, but he is a, a steady player. Really came out aggressively in this ball game, and I think his team has really fed off him. And he's a solid shooter. He shoots better than 42% from three-point range. Marquette throws it away. First bad thing that's happened for them in a while. They've drawn within six, 23-17. All right, John, thank you very much. Terry Gannon, Jay Bill is back here at the Bradley Center, Al McGuire Court here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Bears on the road with a six-point lead. NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber and a good one going on here in Conference USA. Cincinnati at 17 and 9. Marquette, no doubt, already in the NCAA tournament. You got to believe Cincinnati is too. Oh, I don't think there's any question about it, Terry. They've got an RPI in the 20s, and traditionally that means you're in. I think they're an NCAA caliber team. So you look at Conference USA, and that would mean at least four teams. Or if there was an upset in the conference tournament next week, possibly five teams. Box and one look right now with. Joe Chapman on Tony Bobbitt. Everybody else, they're just passing off in his own look, trying to communicate. Better keep an eye on Barker. He's three out of four from three-point range. Here he is. He lost it. Here comes Wade. One-on-one -on -one with Stokes. The dish, Merritt, the foul. Like a big man who can run the floor. And he has been doing a great job of that. Scott Merritt, much tougher this season and much improved. There's Merritt knocking it away and Wade getting out in transition, unselfishly looking for Merritt running the floor. And Merritt, an outstanding free throw shooter, will step to the line. He's really had a solid season, a very good defender, especially on the ball. He's had a heck of a game so far, too. He really has. He's just He's played strong. And he's a good post defender, very versatile. I think this year he's been much stronger inside. When he has gone inside, much more capable. And over his last four games, you can see the point production, not only the 12 points, but the high percentage and rebounding in tandem with Robert Jackson. Field Williams into the game. Here comes Chad Moore, the freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama. 
Teron Barker goes out of the ballgame. Barker, the steadier point guard, doesn't push the ball up court as quickly as does Chad Moore. And Moore, a guy that can really get out in transition. And next year will, I think, be the point guard that Cincinnati looks to. And some recruits coming in for Bob Huggins that uh, some people say may be the best, if not at least one of the best, recruiting classes in America. Yeah, I think it will be. Robert Whaley, who was... Uh, Originally committed to Missouri, right now at Barton Community College in Kansas, an outstanding score. They got Stokes on the walk in the lane. Huggins also has Nick, uh, Nick, excuse me, Nick Williams coming in. Mike Pilgrim is coming in as well as a freshman, and he's also got a transfer from Florida named James White, who is uh, just an outstanding athlete. Top team in the NCAA in terms of turnovers, the fewest turnovers per game. They've already got six here. And Marquette, though, Wade draws the foul, the bucket, they're going to wipe it off and say the foul occurred before the shot. Wade really does have the complete package. He's able to post up, very good off pick and roll, able to get to the basket with his speed, explosiveness, that great first step, and just a magnificent finisher around the glass. See down low, backing his guy in, the shot fake. That didn't look on the ground, but... Yeah, how, was, how did that occur? Field Williams picks up the foul. Yeah, they gave him two shots there. Everybody playing it as if the bucket counted, but of course it didn't. So he's got one more. Tom Crean in his fourth year as the head coach at Marquette. Spent a lot of time at Michigan State. Winning the game. Doing a great run for the Spartans. Wade's got seven. Threw it away, and there's the stick. Here comes Wade. Wade Wade loses it, and it'll stay here. They're call it off a Cincinnati defender. I'm not sure that happened. You know, as athletic as Dwayne Wade is, knocking that ball away, he can't show the ball here. He shows it, and that's what exposed it and got it taken away from him. They have gotten a break. He looked like he went off of his head out of bounds. Jackson operating down low, the bucket and the foul. Hard to stop him when he gets it on the block. The whistle, Kareem Johnson, for that one. Don't forget, ABC's college basketball doubleheader continues next. Got a great one. Number four, Texas taking on Big 12 rival number five, Oklahoma, or Clemson taking on Georgia Tech in the ACC. Check your local listings for the game in your area. More great action coming up right here on ABC. Perhaps number four and number five playing for number one seed. Talk about rebounding. That's going to be an important game for rebounding. Texas, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And Oklahoma, a guard-oriented team. Hollis Wells and Juanis White, two of the toughest guards in the country. They don't lose at home often either. Even though know, Texas won the first matchup at Texas. Steve Novak will get called for the foul. Ian Stokes trying to fight for position down low on the, on the block. That's the second for Novak. 5.59 left until halftime. And we are all tied up at 23. Back seal high into the air, but so is Wade to get the rebound. Here comes Dwayne Wade, leading scoring conference USA. Baseline drive swatted away by Kirkland. Nice block. Wade can get to the basket just about any time he wants, but took on a little bit too much there. Kirkland, the block at one end, the three-pointer at the other end. Not a bad series defensively and offensively. And Armin Kirkland off the bench with six now. Marquette coming back in transition defense, not communicating effectively. He did not get the good shot on the other end, and as often happens, that puts you in a hole with your transition defense. Bearcats doing it from three-point range. Three of those off the right arm of Ron Butler early on. Townsend in and out. Max Seal, the strong rebound. This 2-3 zone has been effective for Cincinnati. They've been able to stop penetration and have rebounded pretty well out of it. Stokes, Townsend is late getting there. And a free throw line jump shot by Leonard Stokes. You can't give him that. He's got six. Just a little bit late off that screen. Not able to fight through it or negotiate it. 
And again, this 2-3 zone, Marquette trying to run a little set against it. Overload on one side. Every time Marquette's had a little run in this first half, Cincinnati's been able to answer. And Marquette has had to expend an awful lot of energy getting back into this ball game. Now that they are right there, it's energized Cincinnati a bit. Turnover, here comes Moore. Stripped by Merritt, and they're going to call him with a foul. Crowd doesn't like that at all. Well, that's his second. You can see the mix of twos and threes. Six of nine from three-point range. Bob Huggins has complained all season long that his team can't shoot the ball, but today at Marquette, they are shooting it very effectively. Marquette has taken some challenge threes that were in by Townsend in transition, so they haven't gotten a lot of great looks. And the game has gotten to the point, Jay, with the three-point shot, it's such an integral part of basketball now that even like Marquette today is trying to establish the inside game. That's what won them the first matchup, but you got to live a little bit from three-point range. You certainly have to take some, but it depends on when, where, and under what circumstances. And thus far, Marquette hasn't gotten great looks from three. Barker back into the game, along with Eric Hicks, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. Barker's had a good one so far, coming back home to his home state. Cincinnati's done a nice job of keeping Marquette off balance, whether it's been in their man or this 2-3 zone. They've really been active defensively. Wade kicking it out. Nice dish down from Diener. And a whistle, three seconds. That's a call you don't see very often. Well, you're not going to find many point guards that are going to give up the ball with an open shot. Usually big guys are going to be looking for a rebound when that ball is kicked out top, but Jackson looking back to it and Diener giving it up to him. Both teams turning it over quite a bit today. Kept trying to trail screens. Awfully difficult on that screen rescreen for Travis Diener to stay with Williams. Exactly what happened. An open look, but he missed it. And the travel called on Max Seal. Tough rebound, but the walk. Six-point lead. Watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Here in the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Just under four minutes left until halftime. Six-point lead for Cincinnati. Played awfully well in this first half, controlling the tempo, especially shooting the basketball from the floor, Jay. Cincinnati 11 of 20, and this number here on the season, 40% from the field for Cincinnati. Now, that would be a pretty good field goal percentage defense. If your team could hold opponents to 40%, you'd be among the, the leaders not only in your conference but nationally, and that's what Cincinnati's held themselves to this year. They get open shots. They're just not able to consistently knock them down, and I think that shows you how well they defend the fact that they've won 17 games against a tough schedule. Not shooting the ball well at all, all season long. At the other end of the floor, they've held Dwayne Wade to seven points so far, but he had six early points. He's only got one point in the last ten and a half minutes, and this one goes through his hands and out of bounds with a wrestling match in the corner. Leonard Stokes with a very nice block out to let that <laughs> ball go out of bounds. <laughs> A nice job by the referees. No need to call any contact there. There was no advantage, disadvantage gained. And yeah, Dwayne looked at the, the officials and said, what are you going to call here? And he kind of looked back and said, what would you like me to call? He just lost it out of bounds. Well, he, Dwayne was trying to go through Leonard Stokes, and Stokes just grabbed his arm to keep him from doing it. So nothing to be gained there. That ball was going to go out of bounds no matter what. Here comes Stokes, who wants it against Townsend. One-on-one, -on -one backing him in. Fadeway on the baseline gets the roll. Leonard Stokes, the senior out of Buffalo, New York, with eight. Stokes, a multi-skilled player. And defense has been able to take a lot of attention and give it to him simply because his teammates have not been able to consistently knock down perimeter shots. Jackson blocked by Hicks, and that starts the break for the Bearcats. Parker over to Williams, blocked at the other end by Townsend. And out of bounds, it'll stay at the Cincinnati end. Well, Cincinnati really got out and ran on that last possession after the shot block. All five guys ran the floor and almost outran the ball. There was no defensive balance, somebody staying back. And had Dwayne Wade come up with that ball before it went out of bounds, could have had a layup. 
having watched Marquette play this year, you get a sense in this game that they just haven't had the spark in the first half. They're a little bit. They're a little bit out of sync. I, I think they came out with intensity, but uh, they might have come out a little bit too fired up. They, they've been a little bit quick with some of their shots, and their timing has been off offensively. And they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole. And Cincinnati has shot the ball extraordinarily well, especially for them. Remember, it was a tie game at 23 all with just over six minutes left until half. Williams in the lane. Maxine with a strong rebound, but a little too strong over the back of Travis Diener. Well, next Saturday, the NHL on ABC returns some of the fiercest rivalries on ice. The Red Wings taking on the Avalanche or Rangers and the Devils. Penguins taking on the Flyers. NHL on ABC returns next Saturday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Certainly uh, old enough in this area to go outside, get a little hockey action on frozen ponds and some of the parking lots. A little chilly, but spring is on the way. It is, huh? And, and what makes you believe that? I've been told by weathermen all over the country that after the snow, spring is on the way. That's the, uh, the hope I'm hanging on to. What a winner it has been. Bob Huggins has been on the officials over the last couple of trips about the foul disparity. 12 fouls for Cincinnati, only seven for Marquette. Field Williams, a long three in and out, and Sanders the rebound. Marquette trying to get a little something before the break here. Wade, one on two, throws it away. Here comes Williams. Poor decision making right now by Cincinnati on that last play. Marquette before. Yeah, both ends not taking care of the basketball. Don't forget, coming up at the half, the Office Depot halftime report. John Saunders, Digger Phelps with an SEC showdown. Kentucky, Florida, that's a great one. Previewing number four and number five coming up next for many of you here on ABC and a pivotal ACC matchup. Wake Forest trying to clinch. And NC State trying to get into the yeah. NCAA tournament. I think if State wins that ball game with 10 wins, they get in. That, that, that's what sealed the deal for the Wolfpack. Because the ACC is such a difficult league. Yeah, I think so. I think it would be awfully hard to turn down a team that gets 10 wins in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And they would have beaten Duke and Wake Forest, the two top teams. The game the other night against Maryland certainly, uh, they, they thought they were there. And to lose by one possession, you'd be seeing a team in North Carolina State that has played three of the top teams in the country that well, assuming they beat Wake Forest and get to 10 wins. Leonard Stokes picks up his second foul with just a minute 25 left until halftime. It would be awfully interesting to see a scenario where the ACC would only get three teams and Conference USA would get four because that's exactly how many Conference USA will get. Novak inside the arc. Got it. Steve Novak, the shooter from Ground Deer, Wisconsin, his first bucket of the game. And that's his first two-point shot in the last 26 attempts, Perry. A bit of a specialist. Crowd on its feet now here in the Bradley Center. And get a two-for-one here if they put something up quickly. Stokes running down the shot clock. Strong move and the dish inside to Hicks. Up and off the glass and good. No foul. Looked like there was contact. But he gets a deuce. His first of the game. Well, you really have to keep him out of the middle. Dino on the drive. Block. Jackson to follow. The offensive work on the boards from Robert Jackson. has been impressive. Cincinnati not a great rebounding team. And they have had an awfully difficult time keeping Marquette off of the offensive glass. So it's a four-point lead for Cincinnati. And Bob Huggins will... Take a timeout to talk things over with 15.5. Well, they've done it from beyond the arc. Barker especially early on, Jay. Teron Barker starting out the ball game with the three. He's a good open shooter. Armin Kirkland has hit two. Field Williams has knocked down shots. When they have had open shots, contrary to what they have done most of the season when they've had open looks, Cincinnati has knocked them down in this ball game. Trying to do something that no other team has done in Conference USA since it started. That is win a title outright away from Cincinnati. And Tom Crean, in just four short years, really done a remarkable job with this program. Bob Huggins, uh, one of his better 
coaching jobs this year, just keeping things together with, with all the adversity that uh, he's gone through, obviously, health-wise, in late September with a heart attack, coming back and with a team that maybe is not quite as talented as the Bearcats have been in the past. A team that would give you a heart attack. Many times throughout the season. Last possession for Cincinnati. Stokes blocked from behind by Wade and out of bounds. So 22 seconds left on the clock. Really just time enough for a controlled tip, Terry. Yep. If it were .3, you could get a catch and shoot theoretically, but right now this is just a controlled tip. So Townsend going to try to keep that ball out of the middle. Nope. No good. Not going to count no matter what because it wasn't a controlled tip. Teron Barker hot early on here at home in Wisconsin. Nine points for him. Three for four from three-point land. And Cincinnati, very impressive here in the first half. The Bearcats with a four-point lead against the number eight team in the country, Marquette. Off of CFO halftime report comes up next. It isn't, though, as we welcome you back to NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber. Cincinnati on the road with a four-point lead over the number eight team in the country, the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Terry Gannon back with Jay Billis, and go figure this game. Cincinnati shoots 40% overall from the year. They're shooting better than 50% from three-point line. They've gotten some open looks. Teron Barker started it all off by hitting his first open three, and Barker shoots 42% from three. Not a bad shooter at all when he's left open, so... Three-point shooting has been the difference for Cincinnati, but Cincinnati turned it over 10 times in that first half. That's their average for an entire ball game. Have to take better care of the ball. And Marquette, while well, they've got to get out to shooters, make them put it on the floor, they've also got to do a better job of running their half-court offense. Haven't gotten the kind of looks they would like to knock down. That's a look at our Nike first-half stats. And remember, the first matchup between these two teams, Marquette out-rebounded Cincinnati by 17. Today, it's only by one, 17 to 16. Ron Barker, a great start, three for four from three-point land. So here we go. Opening possession of the second half starts just the way the game started, with Marquette going inside, but Robert Jackson can't buy the bucket. The Bearcats 17 and one when leading at the break. Barker, no. Marquette has gotten the ball inside with deep post position, but they have not been able to finish. Finish this time. Good block by Max Seal, but Merritt gets it back and he draws the foul. Marquette trying a little run out ball screen, but Cincinnati wouldn't let him get to the screen. Pushing Robert Jackson out of the way and Dwayne Wade with his ability to get to the basket, whether there's a screen or not. Scott Merritt has really done a terrific job inside all game long. He's been strong in there, really gone after the ball. He's been one guy that's really fought Cincinnati. Merritt with nine points in the game so far. And Derek Holman picked up that last foul. Remember, he picked up two fouls within a couple of minutes after the game started. And now starts the second half the same way. Our captain living at the free throw line in this game. And without scoring points from the line, they would be in an even bigger hole. But they need to get out to open shooters. Barker missed an open three just a moment ago. Cincinnati's had a lot of good looks in this game. Leonard Stokes controlling it against Townsend. Stokes with eight points in the first half. Looking for more, kicks it out to Barker. Had a shot for a moment. Williams and now Stokes. Cincinnati trying to isolate Stokes. They go with the double. Tough fadeaway shot. Diener scrambles to get the board, but the whistle. And they're going to call the foul. they get it was it Jackson I believe it was and that is his second loose ball foul and scramble away from the ball so a new possession for the Bearcats again the box and one or actually it's, a, it's just a 3-2 zone they are passing people off in this zone trying to stay with cutters if they go through Max Seal against Jackson. That's a good matchup down low on the block. And Max Seal gets the better end of it. He's got six in the game. In the first matchup between the two, he was 0 for 4 with three points in 33 minutes of play. Nice touch for Dwayne Wade off the glass. Well, he's really worked on that shot. When he first got to Marchetti, he shot a flat ball. 
And he has spent a lot of time in the gym working on his shot. He's got the drive already, the explosiveness. He had that shot, and he's going to be even more difficult to stop. Good help from Merritt defensively. Tough to get back out on Max Hill. He's got two straight buckets, and he's got eight. A lot of body collisions in the paint. Cincinnati sets hard screens. They make hard cuts. But if you are not prepared to trail off those screens, you are going to be late. Yeah, you know that going into every Cincinnati matchup that uh, the next day you're going to be a little bit sore. Here's Dina for three. He's got five in the game, his first three-pointer. And Travis Diener not only hitting the three, but talking to his teammates, trying to lead them in this comeback. So the first three-point bucket of the game for the Golden Eagles, they're within one. Stokes to pull up, jump shot, can't buy the roll, scramble, and got the whistle over the back. Looks like they Max, got Max Seal. Max Seal picks up his third. Travis Diener off the penetration by Merritt, ready to shoot as the ball arrives, not floating on that shot, going straight up and down. Diener has proven to be not only a terrific leader, doesn't make many mistakes at all with the ball, but he hits big shots, and that was a big shot. Gave Marquette a little bit of momentum. Got 51 three-pointers on the year. Good dish down low to Jackson off of lead. The first lead for the Golden Eagles here at home at the Bradley Center. Cincinnati may be 17-1 when leading at the break, but they no longer have the lead. And they like it here in Milwaukee. of Marquette as they try to wrap up the Conference USA title outright. Terry, here's a set play by Marquette. We're going to watch Robert Jackson get behind the defense and find an opening. They hit. There's a little double screen here. You're going to come off of it. Watch Jackson right here and what he does off Dwayne Wade's penetration. As soon as Wade puts the ball on the floor after they look off this double, Robert Jackson finds himself behind the zone. He's staying behind it, and that's how he finds the opening. Jackson's doing a terrific job of finding open areas, and he's finding a lot of them behind the defense. And Jay, we talked about it earlier. It's not a, another one of those boring areas of the game, but the screener turning back to the ball is so important, and he's so often open. The miss by Cincinnati, Jackson another rebound. You know, you're right about that, Terry. Oftentimes, when you look for the screener, he's the guy that's going to be open. Wade high into the air, and they don't call the foul. He had it swatted out of bounds. So the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Al McGuire, court... NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber. Cincinnati with the lead throughout the entire first half, but back come the Golden Eagles in the second half, the number eight team in the country, trying to win the regular season title outright. The UCLA cut the ball screen and Wade turns it down. Changing in midair is Wade, and he draws the foul on Stokes. Leonard Stokes with the foul. Don't forget MJ playing at the Garden for perhaps the last time. The Wizards taking on the Knicks at 12.30 Eastern time. And then Shaq Kobe, the Lakers, hosting the answer. Allen Iverson and the Sixers NBA Sundays on ABC tomorrow. Right here, we got hoops. And again, Marquette scoring from perhaps the most efficient place from which to score on a basketball court, the free throw line. What Wade did in the first six minutes in the last 14 minutes. Starting to turn it up a little bit more here in the second half now. He's got 11. Yeah, he's been much stronger with the ball. He had four turnovers in that first half, uncharacteristic. He averaged about three per game. But got it slapped away in that first half, not being strong with it. Three-point lead for the home team. I mean, Kirkland over Merritt. Not the best of shots, and Wade clears it. A lot different when you have to take challenge shots, and Marquette in the second half has challenged Cincinnati far more than they did in the first half. Again, that same play coming off the double. Merritt, who had such an effective first half, trying to do some work in the second, and he gets called for the three-second violation. That's the second one that we have seen called this afternoon. Back in a moment. 
for among those on Jay's list for the best players in college basketball. Certainly a force defensively, but what about your top five overall? Yeah, here's my All-America team. Certainly some reasonable disagreement can be had about this, but T.J. Ford, nobody's been better at the point guard position. Emeka Okafor, the defensive player of the year. Freshman of the year, Carmelo Anthony of Syracuse and Tubby Smith, I think, has done the best coaching job in America with what he's done with Kentucky's defense and their team chemistry. They've been magnificent. T.J. Ford in action later this afternoon here on ABC as Texas takes on Oklahoma. And obviously, Dwayne Wade in action right now. Two of the top five, according to Jay, at least. I'll back you on most of those, though. I like those. Well, one of the guys missing there was Troy Bell, who's had an absolutely magnificent season. He'll be the first guy in Big East history to average over 20 points per game for four straight seasons. Barker, who had a great first half in three-point range, a little bit out of control, but perhaps got a break. The blocking foul call. Barker's still down. Barker took it strong, and Robert Jackson trying to draw the charge. That's one where you... You almost say as a coach, you admire the fact that he tried to draw the charge. I'd almost rather see him go up and try to block the shot. When you got a little guy coming in there, send it back at him and have him hit, have him on his back looking up at you. Yeah, you got 6'10 going against 6'1. I like his chances blocking the shot. Third foul for Robert Jackson. As Barker misses. Cincinnati's been shooting the ball better from the free throw line over the last three or four games, but they've not been getting there much in this ball game. Sometimes you get into a jump shooting rhythm, you tend to become a jump shooting team. You still have to attack inside and attack the basket because you've got to get to the free throw line on the road. And especially now at this point in the game where you've given up the lead, you're down by three, Marquette has the momentum, you go back to what you do very well. 2-3 zone again. Good. Steal by Hicks, read it perfectly. Here come the Bearcats on the break. Parker being forced baseline, but brings it back out. So many teams are doing that and getting help along the baseline nowadays. Bob it. Now, low, oh, nice dish, and the finish by Eric Hicks, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. Hicks, a terrific athlete. That's the attack, attacking of the basket that I think Cincinnati has to continue. Loose ball out of bounds. Nice play by the fan in the front row. It'll stay right here. And Marquette. There's been nothing easy, Terry, around that basket for Marquette. When they get the ball inside, they have been challenged at the summit. And Cincinnati's sending back some of those offerings. So a moment ago, St. Louis with the win against ECU. So Cincinnati needs a win today on the road to get that by next week at the Conference USA Tournament in Louisville. Perhaps no one has been more valuable to his team in Conference USA than Marquis Perry of St. Louis. Wade huh. again changing in midair and draws the foul once again. I'm not sure that physics allows it, but Dwayne Wade's ability to hang in the air is remarkable. He gets up high and able to maneuver up there. Good shot fake and just can hang there when Hicks seems to have come down before him. And the difference when you can hang like that is the fact that you actually get the shot off after the foul. You're able to finish and so many times convert the three-point play. The foul was on Hicks. And more likely to be able to draw contact, with which Dwayne Wade is very proficient at and winds up at the free throw line a great deal. He's got 12 in the game so far as Terry Sanders comes off the bench. A junior from Milwaukee. What a difference at the free throw line. Loose ball out of bounds, and Marquette gets it back. Everything going their way. Bob Huggins had to know that the shooting display his team put on in the first half would not last. He's certainly not going to get as many open looks in the second half. Marquette's clamped down very effectively, so they've got to continue to attack inside and attack off the dribble. Gainer. Merritt. Wade in the air. Can't get it to go. Here comes Stokes with Hicks out in front. Eric Hicks blocked by Wade. What a block, and it did go off of Eric Cat out of bounds. What a defensive play by Dwayne Wade. Credit to Wade for blocking the shot, but how about Diener running out in front and causing Hicks to slow down just a bit and readjust that shot? Dwayne Wade is an outstanding defensive player, doing a better job of working through screens, which has been a problem for him. 
but he gets a lot of deflections. He is long-armed, very active, gets steals. I mean, we're talking about a complete basketball player. Hasn't had one of his better offensive outings. There's a lot. There he goes. Elliott to Wade from Diener. Set play called by Tom Green. Wade with 14, and now the four-point lead for the Golden Eagles. Maxie with the spin, fade away. Kirkland should have put it down, but didn't. It goes out of bounds. And it will stay right here with the Bearcats. Just screening the back end of that zone. And Dwayne Wade able to get all the way to the basket unobstructed. It wasn't a great pass from Diener either. It was away from the hoop. He, he again had a change in midair. The 10-2 run for Tom Crean's club. Well, you throw it anywhere in the building, and Diener's going to be able to catch uh, Wade is going to be able to catch it. Stokes. Lost the foul on Novak, who barely moved, but still may have initiated the contact. And that's where Stokes can be dangerous, in transition and putting the ball on the floor. Novak, not the fleetest of foot, and he knows that Stokes wants to go middle. And he just gave him a little jab step and got Novak to jump to the, to the middle side. And that opened up the baseline drive. Make free throws on the road when you're down in the second half. These teams both well scouted. And Steve Novak going with that scouting report and trying to take away the middle drive. Wound up giving up the baseline drive, and Stokes got nothing out of it. So Marquette controls it with a four point lead. Cincinnati's inability to score consistently puts a tremendous amount of pressure on their defense to get stops. Look at Wade operating behind the zone, up and in. Oh, what a good look by Novak. Wayne Wade's got 16. The last four games, he's had 20-plus outings. Looking for that once again, and there's a timeout on the floor. The Bradley Center erupts. There's the home team, the Golden Eagles. Looking to take control of this with 12.38. More signs here in the Bradley Center than I think we've seen in any arena all season. Wade. Wade, Wade. There is no part of this bad young man's game that is deficient. He can do everything out on the court. His shooting has improved. He is explosive around the basket, able to finish. And defensively, you know, when your best player is your hardest worker, that is just a joy as a coach. And you know that Tom Crean enjoys going to practice every day because he knows Dwayne Wade is going to lay it on the line. It certainly makes you a better coach when your upperclassmen set the example for the rest of the team. And as you said, your star player sets that example. There's Dwayne Wade's wife. Wade is a father of a young child. A lot of responsibility on the shoulders of that young man, not only on the floor, but off it as well. 12-2 well, run by Marquette, just broken. Little short jump shot by Tony Bobbitt, just his first bucket of the game, but it comes at an important time. Cincinnati going to stick with this 2-3 zone. They have to be active in it, get their hands up and discourage passes because Marquette's movement has been much better in the second half, getting it inside. Look at Merritt with the fadeaway off the glass. Scott Merritt with 12, and he has been a force today. Careless pass, and you got to believe Bob Huggins will be off the bench with that one. Tom Green is, but for a different reason. Getting the ball along the baseline, and the nice move by Merritt. Strong with the ball again. Took a little bump, still able to finish the play, and Marquette able to make that defense move, the 2-3 zone, moving it with the pass. And ultimately, once you make that zone move, you can get it to break down. So the difference in shooting in the first and second half. Both teams now with 11 turnovers. And some critical turnovers in the last few minutes by the Bearcats. Marquette doing great, a great job with interior screening and getting it along the baseline to collapse that defense. Diener for three. He's got a hot hand here in the second half. His second three-pointer of the half. He's got eight overall, and Marquette has taken control. It is as loud as it gets right now here in the Bradley Center. 
Chad Moore running one hander. It's good. And the officials will talk it over and call the travel violation. There did not appear to be a whistle. Of course, we wouldn't have been able to hear it anyway. So Bob is not happy at this point. A nine-point lead for Marquette. We'll come back with more after this message and a word from our ABC station. John, back here when we left you, it was a nine-point game. Now it's a seven-point game, even though there hasn't been any more action. It was an inadvertent whistle, they say, on this last play. So they're going to count the bucket by Chad Moore. The referees indicated a walk after the inadvertent whistle was being discussed. And both coaches were incredulous. Tom Crean didn't like the call, neither did Bob Huggins. And both of them made their feelings known. I wonder how many minutes or maybe seconds a game head coaches actually spend seated on the bench. Oh, they don't even need a seat anymore. You could make some more money, sell their seats. Pete Gillen just has a towel for his knee. <laughs> Merritt with the miss, and here come the Bearcats. Trying to get some of that momentum back. Certainly the outside shooting has left them. Marquette doing a very good job of being there on the catch, not allowing any open looks. Bob it is instant offense, but this time forces the issue and going to draw the blocking foul by Steve Novak. Novak just a tad late in getting there from the weak side, and Bobbitt, not sure whether he lost control of the ball, why he would jackknife or double clutch at that point in taking it to the basket. Needs to go a little bit stronger with that. That's the fourth foul on Novak. As Robert Jackson waits to check in for Marquette. And so does Todd Townsend. Tony Bobbitt with three points after that last free throw. Here comes Jackson in. Bobbitt is a young man that can put up points in a hurry, though. Maybe these free throws will get him going a bit. He had 29 points against Oregon in Cincinnati's big win of the Jimmy V Classic. And he can put them up quickly. At 25 against Louisville, the epitome of a streak shooter. Sometimes it's going well, sometimes it isn't. Back to man to man for Cincinnati. Five-point lead for Marquette. Deaver, who's hit two from three point land in this half, draws the foul. Wayne Wade setting the screen, and that freed up Diener. Well, ESPN's your place on Selection Sunday, the NCAA Men's Selection Special, presented by Staples. Next Sunday at 7 Eastern, Dick Vitale, Chris Fowler, Deaver Phelps, Bill Walton, along with a number of celebrities, Ben Affleck, Justin Timberlake, many more, giving their input at as ESPN spans the country to get all the opinions about who's going to win this year's title. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Right now, who would your number one seeds be? Uh, you have to go with Arizona and Kentucky, and then I'd go with uh, Texas and Oklahoma right now. I, I still think a Big 12 team, whether it's Texas, Oklahoma, even Kansas still has an opportunity, is going to get a number one seed. They could get two, depending Kentucky, on what happens in that tournament. Kentucky-Florida matchup. Something's riding on that in terms of number one seeds. Yeah, I, although I, I think Kentucky's going to get a number one seed no matter what. Yeah. Well, Bob Huggins has spent absolutely no time on the bench because uh, the second half has not gone his way. Up talking to officials, up talking to his players. Twelve turnovers. That's above their season average. Unusual to have so many turnovers in the first half for Cincinnati. Ten first-half turnovers for the Bearcats. They shot the ball very well, but the turnovers minimize the impact of their solid shooting. A little bit of trouble on the sideline, so Tom Crean calls for the timeout. And they'll talk things over for a few moments while we have this moment. Take a look at this week's Payne Weber Senior of the Week. It's Illinois forward Brian Cook averaging 20 points, 7.1 rebounds a game at 26 in the win over Michigan last Saturday. Off the court, Brian participates in the school's Red Ribbon and Hometown Heroes campaigns, reading to students at local schools, speaking about the dangers of drug abuse. UBS Payne Weber will donate $1,000 to its Senior of the Week scholarship fund in the name of Illinois senior Brian Cook. The man can play, too. We had him earlier in the year. Not many people thought that Brian Cook could display the kind of leadership and strength that he has this year, and he's really been magnificent as a leader. He's got a young team with D. Brown and Darren Williams in the starting backcourt, both freshmen, and Cook has really led that young team through the wilderness 
near the top of the Big Ten. They're going to the tournament. They'll be probably a four or five seed. Saw the banners here at the Bradley Center a moment ago. It is Al McGuire Court. And hard to believe the coach is gone. Blocking foul called on the block. Max Seal trying to defend Dwayne Wade, which is never easy. And that's number four on Jason Max Seal. Terrific spin. Awfully difficult for Max Seal to come over there and get straight up and down because Dwayne was coming at him. Max Seal with four. Stokes Holman and Tony Bobbitt with three for the Bearcats. We've got 946 left in this one, so Max Seal, that, that's a big blow to Bob Huggins' chances here. He's got to go to the bench. One thing that Wade has been doing much better lately is getting to the free throw line. Coming into this game over his last five, he's gotten the line 53 times. That's over 10 times per game. 18 points overall, 11 in the second half for the junior from Robbins, Illinois. What a great Wild. shot by Wade. Coming off his man to block that shot. Diener pushes it up. Nowhere to go, kicking it out to Townsend. Got to get somebody back. Sanders after the good look. And it's stuck. Hell ball. So Cincinnati will get it. It's their possession. Again, somebody behind the defense. This time it was Terry Sanders and got that shot blocked. When you go up against Cincinnati, you'd better go up strong because they're going to challenge it. Foul trouble or no. What do you do offensively right now if you're Bob Huggins? I think they got to try to get something going to the basket. Right now they're running a little flex look on the low block, looking for the screener, Maxi, or it's Hicks if they could get it. Parker has been cold since the early going. Brooklyn can't complete this one, and Robert Jackson starts the Marquette fast break, albeit a very slow one, and Diener pulls it back out. Trying to run some clock. Chapman has done a nice job this season off the bench. As Diener looks at his coach and calls the play with 14 and counting on the shot clock. You've got a great player in Wade, and you've got a point guard who understands the game. That's a tough combination come tournament time, but the walking violation down on the block. Well, Marquette is going to guard you, and they're going to rebound. That's what this program is all about. Every day they do a drill called war, which came from Michigan State when Tom Crane was with Tom Izzo. And you take a look at the shooting numbers. Really flip-flop from that first half. Marquette doing a much better job of running their offense with precision and strength. A tale of two halves, and Leonard Stokes tries to change all that. The senior who's already graduated has 10 points. Stokes with a degree in social sciences. Now working on one in education. First one in his family to graduate from college. Jackson lost it out of bounds as he goes to the floor. So. Marquette with a seven-point lead, 7.56 left in this one. Nearly 19,000 on hand here at the Bradley Center as Marquette has taken control in the second half, 54-47 as Tom Crane's club came out after the break. Remember, Cincinnati 17-1 when leading at the break. You look at the numbers, 13-2 in his fourth year here in conference trying to wrap up uh, the regular season crown outright improvement every year in this marquette program and this team is just getting better and better they've improved throughout the season they have a signature star in Dwayne wade they have an inside presence in robert jackson and jackson's really made a big difference in this team scott merritt who has done a terrific job this season of blending in, been much stronger. And a guy they can look to not only for rebounding and some scoring, but a guy who knocks his free throws down. Outside shot way off that time from Tony Bobbitt. Doesn't have it going on today. Gets it back, though, and buys it off the glass. So, missed it the first time, but scrambled to get it back. It's a five-point game, and Bobbitt's got six. Long way to go in this one, Terry. And Bobbitt, if he can get hot, and put points on the board in a hurry. Second chance points. Cincinnati just now getting on the board in terms of those. Jackson. Oh, nice little fundamental basketball. Nice little lob pass. 
Jackson. He's got 14. Nice speed, isolating Jackson on the low block and passing to his left hand instead of to the offense, passing away from the defense and leading him right into his move. Final regular season game, and obviously the last one here at home for the seniors. Stokes. Hicks lost it. Merritt. Jump ball will go back to Marquette. Travis Diener kept that ball alive, and Diener, despite his size, able to get in there and rebound. Watch this nice pass by Merritt. Throwing away from the defense. Hicks was on the high side, so he threw it toward the baseline. And there was no way for Hicks to recover. Weak side help was late in getting there. No pressure on the ball, so Merritt was able to look in there very easily. Never put it on the floor either, like you always used to do back in the day. That's Dude. exactly right. Always used to get in trouble that way. Well, I never passed it anyway. That was just an excuse <laughs> for me, so I didn't have to give it up. Foul on Bobbitt, and that is number three on Tony Bobbitt, and he hasn't played all that much off the bench in this afternoon's game. Tom Green using Diener as a screener there. Getting a little on big screen, so there can't be a switch. And you often see a disparity in free throws when you're on the road, but Bob Huggins would like to see his team get to the line a little bit more often. And when they get there to hit. 18-3 to three in terms of made free throws. Another jump ball, and it goes back to Bob Huggins' club. He's searching for answers offensively here. Well, their defense is so good and so tough that they stay in games even when they're not shooting the ball well. Wade on Barker, who had the hot hand in the first half. But they haven't even looked to go to Teron Barker in the second. Bobbitt came off the screen. He was open momentarily. You know he's looking for offense when he's on the floor. There he goes. He's got one from three-point land. And he can bring them back in a hurry. You've got to get him inside that line. That's where he can kill you. You can shoot off the dribble, pull up. But if you get him inside the line, he can only two you. Three in you is much worse. Three in you is bad. Nine points in the game off the three. For Bobby. Wade, the spin, using his body inside. He does that so well. Getting through a space that doesn't seem to exist. Don't forget. A college basketball doubleheader continues, and a great one coming up next for most of you. Number four, Texas against Big 12 rival Oklahoma. Number four, taking on number five, perhaps a number one seed on the line there. They both might be number one seeds. Or an ACC showdown, Clemson and Georgia Tech. Coming up next right here on ABC. So Wake Forest taking control over NC State. And what a job Skip Prosser has done with that Wake Forest team. That's a young basketball team. He has taken a great player himself in Josh Howard. And Howard has led that young team to an ACC championship, their first outright since 1962. Uh, early 60s. Wade's got 20 now for the fifth straight game. And that's not all. I mean, he's rebounded. He's blocked three or four shots. He's had three or four steals. Nice his way all the way to the glass, up and in. So Tony Bobbitt now looking to score every time down. He's got 11. And when he scores, his body language improves. Now he's going to get out and guard. He's got a, a confident look on his face. And Jay, Cincinnati just won't go away in this game. It's a four-point game in a world of time over five minutes. Well, Cincinnati, over the last seven years, they don't know anything else but being champion. Too easy for Dwayne Wade to kiss off the glass, and he's got 22. Wife loves it, as she should. Kirkland now over Merritt, a tough shot. And that's a three-pointer. So it's a three-point game with 441 in County. Well, there's no way you can expect the Cincinnati team to give up. They're going to guard you for 40 minutes. When they hit shots, a bonus. They better or they won't be able to go to their locker room. But how do you defend against that? Well, how about that? Worried about the drive? And he just stands up with the kiss off the glass. What a great player. Crowd wanting a defensive stand right now. Diener trying to do that against Bobbitt, but the quick first step, and they're going to whistle Diener with the reach. It's only his second. Wayne Wade getting the ball against Barker. He realizes he has the height advantage, so just to turn and shoot. And as our friend Bill Raftery would say, this is a kiss. You do that well. 
been working on that for a while. I've you? always wanted to be Bill for a variety of reasons. I understand. One, you get a great table at every restaurant you walk into. Yeah, you haven't mentioned any restaurants here in Milwaukee on this holiday. <laughs> There's some great ones, too, right around the corner. Bobbitt, who's provided the spark here in the second half coming off the bench. 12 points and all in the second half. And there's a look at Travis Diener, who may have injured his shoulders, clutching that right shoulder region on the bench. Took a little bit of a shot. You hope he just had the wind knocked out of him, but he is clearly in some pain on that bench. So Bobbitt with 13 in the second half, and it's a three-point lead for Marquette. No true point guard in the game, so it's got to be a collective effort. Everybody's got to come back and help with the ball handling duties. It's one of the reasons you see Cincinnati in the full court pressure after the free throw. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter. With Wade, you can just clear him out. But dribble handoff out top. Merritt, oh, what a nice pass to Chapman, who finishes. Well, it's frustrating when the big guys are putting it on the floor and making plays off the dribble. Bob Huggins wants his guys to defend better than that. Kirkland to the middle over Merritt. Nice touch. Armin Kirkland, only a freshman from Tyler, Texas. He's got 11 points. We had a great game against UAB at 18 points. Smart move. Bring it back out. Didn't have the numbers. Diener still in a significant amount of pain over on that bench. Jackson and a blocking foul along the baseline. So Eric Hicks picks up the foul. Just didn't have the angle. I'm not sure how much there was of a foul and how much there was of Jackson's feet slipping out from underneath him. And Diener a little earlier this year had some back spasms in a ball game. It turned out not to be as bad of an injury as they first had thought. And you wonder if that's got anything to do with the problem he's having now. I'd love to get him back in there to handle the point guard duties and free up Wade here in the last 3-18. Jackson with 15 in the game. And in the first matchup between these two, as you look at Diener obviously in pain on the sideline, it came down to free throws. Cincinnati with a charge in the last four minutes, but Marquette nine of ten from the free throw line in the last minute of the game to close it out. So Jackson with another free throw, the five-point lead for Marquette. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. You got memories of the late 70s here in Milwaukee. Great time for Marquette basketball and uh, pretty close to that right now. Tony and Riley Crane, Tom's wife and son. Son didn't know he's on TV. You gotta have better camera presence than that. Stay right there. Well, Joni knows a thing or two about coaching. Her father, Jack Harbaugh, the head coach at Western Kentucky, won a national championship this year before retiring. Mm -hmm. And her brother, Jim Harbaugh, University of Michigan, and NFL quarterback for years and years, now an assistant coach with the Oakland Raiders. So she knows a thing or two about long hours and X's and O's and watching film. And all of that comes into play this time of year more than ever. Absolutely. These teams get ready for the NCAA tournament, and both these clubs will be there. If they want to go in on a roll. Diener, by the way, set to check in over at the scorer's table. Not injury, but right shoulder. He couldn't tell when it happened. Oh, Wade! The fadeaway out of bounds. 26 in the game. Terry, he has done it all, and he's put this team on his shoulders when it was struggling offensively. Seven-point lead for the Golden Eagle. Look at the Bearcats turn to now. Bobbitt's been the hot hand in the second half. Maxiel with four fouls. The spin, no. Guess who with the rebound? Wade. Under two minutes. And everybody's standing here at the Bradley Center. Boy, Diener wants to get back in the ball game. He's getting Wally pipped out there by Wade. <laughs> it's all right with Tom Crane as long as the lead continues to be seven. Running off some clock. Shot clock down to five. Merritt spins in the lane, draws iron, and they get it back. New shot clock. 
for the Golden Eagles. And rebound number eight for Dwayne Wade. There is not a column on the stat sheet where Wade does not have a three or more. At what point do you send him to the free throw line here? Not on this possession, obviously. Too much is left. Take it off the clock. Oh, nice play by Stokes to take it away. Here come the Bearcats. Parker, you can't waste time now. Under a minute. Kirkland. And now you got a foul. Bob but Huggins no, telling his team to foul. No, no one's doing it. Wade calls the timeout to get Diener into the game and to talk things over with Tom Crean on the sideline. Dwayne Wade making every big play, getting every big shot here in the second half for Marquette. And getting every big rebound. When Marquette was struggling, it was Wade that stepped forward. When Diener went out of the ball game, Wade took over at the point guard position. He's had steals, he's had deflections, he's had block shots, and he's had big shots like that one. What a line that Dwayne Wade has put up in this ball game. And when you look ahead at postseason play, you look for teams with strong backcourts, with great players who you can give the ball to in the last four minutes of a game and say, go get me a bucket, and a team that can play up and down basketball or half-court basketball, and Marquette pretty much fits that entire package. And look at that, uh, that line, 26 points, nine boards, five assists. That does not reflect the three steals he's had, the three blocks, probably 10 plus deflections. And a lot of those rebounds he's had have been big ones. Diener back in the game, almost throws it away. But it will remain at this end. So Travis Diener who went out just about two minutes ago with a strange injury to his right shoulder. It's a good sign for Marquette that he's back in. Way a dangerous pass. He went and got that one. And Cincinnati choosing not to foul here. Still have 15 on the shot clock. Jackson going to score, and there's the foul. Kirkland picks up the foul. done a great job of putting the ball on the floor and when he's drawn the defense to him dishing it off and this has to be a very nice moment for Marquette with the tradition and history of this program to step up in Tom Green's fourth year and win a Conference USA title outright and to seal it against Cincinnati who has dominated this conference since its birth seven years ago Seven regular season crowns for Cincinnati. And now Tom Crean looking for the outright title heading into the Conference USA Tournament in Louisville. Bob Huggins calls the timeout. Have a word with his players on the sideline. Well, Conference USA, it's been a good year for this conference when you look at, uh, no doubt, four teams. Possibly five, probably four teams going to the postseason. What about the players this year? Well, Dwayne Wade is the player of the year in the conference, in my opinion. And Louisville, the freshman of the year, Francisco Garcia, an outstanding perimeter shooter. And I think you've got to give coach of the year, even though John Calipari at Memphis and Rick Patino at Louisville have done great jobs. Tom Crean, to me, is coach of the year. And Damon Brown from Charlotte leads the nation in made three-point field goals, gains. Chris Massey's been magnificent at Memphis, a double-double guy. And Marquis Perry, we've talked about him. St. Louis really has had a terrific season has led the Billikens all year long to put them in positions to win. It's Brown got 132 threes, I think. Yeah, he's got, uh, that's amazing. Remarkable shooter. And a guy who has earned a fourth year of eligibility for Bobby Luke. Yes, yes, yes. Seven point lead is now an eight-point lead. Jackson's got 18 in the game. Bobbitt's got to hurry it up. Smart move by Crean. A little pressure to take time off the clock. Stokes. And Townsend wraps it up and is fouled by Kirkland. And that should do it. They're at home on senior day in Milwaukee. This Marquette team has worked so hard for this moment. 
And I know how gratifying it must be for Tom Crean and his staff to be able to watch their players just moments away from celebrating a Conference USA championship in this building. They've averaged over 15,000 in this building. Almost 19,000 on hand uh, today, and they've broken the attendance record. And it's all due to the hard work of this man right here, Tom Green, who's one of the brightest young coaches in America. What a different attitude here to Marquette. They lace them up every day in practice and go to work. This team, a very together group. They watch film. They talk basketball. They really are a group that really appears to like each other. Yeah, it's a team that seems to enjoy coming to practice every day. Of course, it's a little bit easier to do that when you're 22 and four going to 23 and four. Right, but, they, but that, that's precisely the point is they, they built that over the years and it, it could not have been easy to come to practice four years ago. Robert Jackson going to the bench. He had 21 in the first matchup and this afternoon, 17 points, nine rebounds. Pounds in the extra free throw here. It's a nine point lead. And a thank you to the seniors from the crowd. Barker, nothing doing in the second half for Jerron Barker, and it continues as Wade hauls it in. And that is going to do it for the Golden Eagles as they wrap up the outright Conference USA regular season crown. They are storming the court at Marquette, and this one is well-deserved. This is when you should storm a court, when you win a championship. And Marquette, outright, Conference USA champions. Memphis has had a great year, but uh, Cincinnati now moves to 17 and 10 overall, 9 and 7. So Memphis, the other division here. Marquette, this division, and the outright crown goes to the Golden Eagles. And because St. Louis won earlier in the day, Cincinnati will not get the first round by in the tournament. And that tournament will be in Louisville. Marquette going with Dwayne Wade, the player of the year in this conference, in my opinion. So Marquette with the win, 70 to 61. Stay tuned now. We'll be heading to the second game of our college basketball doubleheader after this from our ABC stations. For Jay Billis, Terry Gannon saying so long, everybody.